Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. It is Straight Talk Food for the Soul. And it is Saturday evening. And I have an amazing guest who's coming back. Tyrone's been on with his wife before. But Tyrone, I want you to introduce yourself to the people and tell them the name of your business. And then we're going to pray in and we're going to get started. Awesome. Well, thank you, Claudia, for having me on. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Tyrone Bird, and uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia, my wife is Pam, and we run several businesses, but mine in particular is a business, Bird International. I've been in business for over 25 years, and uh, that's what I do. Okay. Um, Tyrone, if you would pray us in tonight. Sure. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the blessing that you've given us each and every day. In particular, we thank you for the day in which you've given us this day. We ask that the Holy Spirit will come in the midst of us and that everything we do or say or talk about comes directly from his voice into the hearts of people that they may receive you in their heart. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And our scripture tonight is Philippians, the second chapter and the third verse. And it reads as this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. And I, I, I think of you, Tyrone, with that scripture, because I've known you almost as much time as you've been in business. I was on one of the same teams that you were on, and you have always carried yourself in excellence. I've never seen you raise your voice. Um, always in position, when Tony Rodriguez needed you, anybody on the team that needed you. So I've watched you over the years with your wife, children. So I honor you tonight, man of God, for okay. being a great leader. And we have two words we want okay. to define tonight. Our first word is disciples. And our second will be leadership. But we're going to start with leadership first. Okay. The action of leading a group of people or an organization. You do that, but I know it's got to be more to leadership than that. Well, uh, it's a lot of things that involve in leadership. Uh, one in particular, and you can pull out a lot. One is that you have to be an example setter. You know, uh, no one would follow someone if they're not uh, setting an example to be followed and one someone that they can trust and, and if you could look at one definition of influence which we always use all the time and it's called influence when you have the influence of people good or bad you have ability to have uh leadership skills or, or the ability to move and guide the people okay in the business you're in duplication is something that's very important kind of explain to the people what duplication really means okay when you look at it from uh, uh i just from a business platform i stand on it's not cloning okay it is more or less you're you're developing a mindset by which people can take their skills their uh gifts that they get from god and they can they can match what you do in terms of putting together a business structure or in or income or match that will that will give them the same type of results that you get if they do the same type of work that you do so they don't necessarily you don't necessarily clone people what you do is you give people the ability to match the work ethic and the work that you do to achieve the same results okay when you talk about worth ethic worth and leadership how do they mesh together because you have to have a good work ethic but i know a lot of leaders who don't have it and some are successful so how does a man in 25 years of business be successful well when you look at uh and john maxwell wrote a great book called five levels of leadership uh and I, I can't get right off the bat, get all of them because I didn't write it all down. But one you have when you're looking at getting someone or helping someone duplicate what you're doing is that when you think of it as walking up a ladder 
and or walking up some stairs and guiding somebody up the stairs with you. Well, you take the first step. And because you take the first step, you've already mastered how to get to the first step. Now you're helping somebody else get to the first step while you take the second step. And so when you look at developing leadership, you know, there is what's called a positional leader. You know, in the military, we knew a lot about that. If you was a sergeant, E5, whatever it is, just because of your rank and position, you had uh, the authority to move and make decisions and tell anyone below your rank what to do and when to do it. You know, so you have that positional leadership. And then the second one uh, you get is, is really a permission is that you get people give you permission to guide them. Okay. We have somebody on with us tonight. I, I'm assuming somebody on your team, Tyrone. Well, it's a, it's a gentleman that I grew up with from junior high school on. And his name is Stephen Coker. And he's from, he lives in uh, the Toledo, Ohio area. Hello, Mr. Coker. How are you? I am doing excellent. Well, tell me, since uh, you've known Tyrone a long time, I've known him about 20 something years. So you've known him way longer. Tell us something about his leadership ability. Well, me and Ty Tyrone, uh, we grew up together. We played sports together. Um, we were uh, teammates. We were rivals. And the thing about it is when, when you look at leadership, you, you want somebody who is willing to be um, in their position but be able to come where you're at, mm. to be able to talk you through. It's like, here's the thing. If, if you have a baby, okay, if you want to understand where that baby's at, you can be an adult, but you still have to come to their level of understanding to teach them to move forward and that's the that's that's the qualities of a leader is to be able to move forward and move backwards at the same time what i mean is you're moving forward but you're moving backwards to bring those that are behind you with you i got that now tyrone in the business that you're in Mm -hmm. There are some people you can't bring with you. How difficult that is that for a leader that you know the person has the potential to be great, but they don't see it. And sometimes you have to come back for them later. You know, a lot of times it's, it's, it's really challenging and painful because you want it so bad for them and you see the potential. But I think back on uh, on how God looks at us. And he sees this great potential in us. And we're just not living to our standard. And, and sometimes kind of like Exodus, he just want to wipe you out and start all over again. But he says, no, I got to give him a chance to catch up. And, and I'm going to still continue to bless everybody else or move everybody else. And I'm going to allow him a chance to grow. And, and as a leader, that's kind of what you have to do. Uh, you you want to be able, when you lead someone, you want to be able to not just lead one person. Because if you're leading a lot of people a lot of different times, then you're there for everyone. And if someone is not ready for you to, to help pull them, you don't alienate them. What you do is you give them space and then you take your skill set and move to help someone else. And that keeps you from being frustrated or keeps you from uh, not believing in yourself to the point that you can help someone. And I understand that because when I was on the team, uh, Tracy Fields was my upline, mm -hmm. um, direct from Alice. And um, my business kind of fell apart, but not the relationship that I had with Tony and Alice. It never fell apart. I started another business and they were one of my first clients. So they built something inside of me that gave me courage to do something different. And Alice always taught us, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. And I ended up finding a business that I was successful in. So to that, let's talk about your leader, Tony, just a little bit, because 
God, and then it was Tony, and now it's you. And y'all kind of remind me, I was watching a documentary on Bishop Paul Morton today, and it was on leadership and how what he did changed the culture of church because he brought Brat, Baptist and Pentecostal together. And they didn't always understand, but they end up molding and it became a great movement. Tyrone, your leadership is a great movement. So tell us a little bit about your mentor, Tony. Well, Tony is a, a good mentor of mine. It's funny because when we met, I was still in the military active duty and he had just gotten out. But what he did was he asked me about what was I doing in the life after the military, which I didn't know. And he kind of gave me some direction. And here's what Tony did. He challenged me by challenging my, he wanted to see what type of person I was. So he challenged my credibility. Mm -hmm. What he said was, I want to meet you at a certain place. And he gave me, he didn't give me like, most people say 7.30, 8 o'clock. He gave me a time like 7.15, <laughs> around that time frame. And and he, and, and uh, I, was, I was cool with it because two things that had happened to me that gave me confidence. One, I played sports all the way through school, so I knew about being on time. Number two is that uh, my college football coach would always set us up at an odd time to come for um, meetings. He would say 723. And he would stand with a stopwatch to make sure that you were there before 723. And so I knew about time stuff. And then I placed in, the, in a fraternity. I knew about time. And so he challenged me. And so when he did that to me, I said, well, if this is a person that can challenge my integrity. Then he has to have some type of, you know what I'm saying? So he has to have something to show for. And he did that. And then he set by example is because he didn't wait for me to catch up. Now, he didn't leave me behind. He gave me a framework to work with, uh, gave me some conditions that will make it successful. And then he moved forward. And so every time I was stepping forward, he was already stepping forward, too. So he kept a distance between us as an example to help me through the time. And then he was there for me in some of my challenging times. You know, it was, you know, being in business, you know, for the years that we've been in, there's, it's not going to always be pretty. It's not going to always be sunshine because that's just not how life is. And so he was there for me to be with me in those challenging times, to lead me on, to be an encourager and stuff like that. So when he sat back and had challenging times, because he was there for me and made it really, it made it flawlessly easy for me to be there for him. Because hello, I, ev like, hello, everybody, for coming on tonight. I do have a question to both gentlemen that are on, and the question is, what does positive leadership really mean to you? We'll ask Stephen, and then we'll have Tyrone to answer. Okay, go ahead, Coach. <laughs> Uh, positive leadership for me is one that knows how to lead and encourage at all times. Even even when you have those that are, how you say, uh, uh, lacking, you you find a way to bring them to a point where they they are willing to even uh, uh, move to move forward even in the challenging position. It, it means never give up, never give up. Because when, when we look at, when we look at what God done for us, mm. okay, and I have to say it like this, God loved us so much that he did not want heaven without us. He did not want heaven without us. So he sent his son so that we might be saved. So the whole world, they're, they're, nobody in the world has an excuse because of the love of God. So when you look at true leadership, God is the number one true leader. And he trained us how to be leaders. There is a blueprint. I mean, a lot of people don't, some people don't want to accept it, but there is a blueprint and it teaches us how to be leaders. Come on, Tyrone. And, and the piggyback on what just Steve just said is that we, if we look at the master blueprint, 
and we sit back. Sometimes you have to get in the, you know, when you start off being a leader, it's not like you just start off and you're gang banging and, and everything is positive and you're leaving positive. You have to sit back and really just allow. And to me, my digital deadline, my digital download is the Holy Spirit. You got to allow for the spirit to get inside of you, to give you guidance. Mm-hmm. Yes. And stuff yes. like that. Because forgive you, if you listen to the right guidance, even when you're coming in in a different way, if you listen to the guy, this is going to bring you up. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. we hear the phrase, when they go low, we go high. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to be able to stay up even when you want to stay low. And I take prime example, my brother, I am so thankful and so proud of him. He's had a rough life. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he had a stroke. Mm. and put in the hospital and 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 it's because of how he was living he's not living right well everything moved in the right direction and he'll be coming out of rehab in a couple of days and Mm. and called me today excited fired up and he said that he he called and and i'm the younger and he called thanking me man i thank you for being whatever and i'm like i'm saying myself (laughs) do anything <laughs> i mean he's thanking god he's thanking me and he said mm-hmm. you know in essence i guess i had the and it would have been in most people's nature i could have said you this 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 and got on the downside and kind of pushed him and mm-hmm. kicked him down when he mm-hmm. was down because of this, his lifestyle <laughs> and stuff like that but i couldn't you know, just when, it, you know, just, I you know I'm calling him ready to give him a piece of my mind, so to speak. And just as we speak, the Holy Spirit changes my tongue and I don't mm. do that. Mm. And, and you got to be able to listen to that because that will give you positive leadership when you're trying to help somebody. Because, you know, people aren't really influenced on the negative. They may do mm. it because it may sting, but negative really doesn't influence the way right. positive does. And well, we want to pray for your brother that when he comes out there and we're not going to ask for a speedy recovery because speedy's not always necessarily the best thing for him to go at a good speed for his body, for it to recover, to replenish. And Tyron, you know, I know about sickness mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just takes time. It takes time. And this is a season where God can have you silent because you can't move around a lot. And that you can really concentrate on what he wants to say to you. So mm-hmm. I didn't take the season of sickness as a bad thing. I took it as, okay, God, you know, I needed the rest. Now, during the rest time, what am I going to do while my body's replenishing? So we're mm-hmm. praying that every negative force will be away from him. And we send it back to the pit from which it comes. Yeah, so yeah. We, we believe in God yeah. for healing. Our next question is. How do you keep yourself motivated during uncertain times? That's, uh, you know, people always say motivations. You know, you hear people talk about motivations and inside job, external job. Motivation to me uh, is wrapped up in the, the discipline that I have to create mm-hmm. or that I created. You know, um, I remember when I years when I first got started in business, you know, I was excited about getting self-help books and I was just devouring self-help books, devouring tapes and audios, just anything because I didn't hear good stuff. All I heard was negative. And so when I heard good things, I was just devouring my I was so hungry for it. But I remember running into someone, a young lady, she said, I see you devouring all these self-help books. I see you all doing that stuff. When do you get into the Bible? And, you know, me, I'm, you know, I kind of hit myself in me. I'm like, you know, I read the Bible, you know, the little you know, scriptures in those words. That I, when I read books, you know, they got little scriptures in there. But that was not, that was not cutting it. You know, mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to dive into the word so that the word would encourage me in those tough times. And so that kind of helped, but it was wrapped up in making sure I had the word into me and remembering what I was taught when I was a kid growing up mm-hmm. about the faith, 
you know, remember pulling that back, you know, like they say, train up a child and ways should go. And when he's older, he will not depart. It don't say in the middle. <laughs> it just says <laughs> when he's so he can get good right here. He can he can act a fool through here and come back through here, you know. So it got me to that point. But what it did was it allowed me to seek discipline in putting good stuff in. So when the bad times came. I was always still putting good stuff in. And so it didn't discourage me. You might get down for a little bit, but you never count yourself out because you feel just when you feel like you're running out of juice, there's another dose of something coming in good mm -hmm. that'll pick you right back up. What do you think about that, Stephen? Well, you know, it, 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 uh, I can hit it a couple of different ways. Uh, one right now, I just come through a uh, uh, um trials and tribulations that was really tough and I'm not done with them yet. And, but I can speak on something that happened yesterday. Uh, me and Tyrone had a conversation. I got a mural that I'm working on in my, in my bathroom and I started it and I haven't done anything with it. So um, it should have been done. And I said, you know, and after me and Tyrone had a, a very, really good conversation about it. And he encouraged me. So I said, you know what? If I don't do anything, I'm going to go and do just a little something to it just to, to let myself know I've done something today. So the day didn't go without me doing something on that. The other thing is, when I, ever since I was a little boy, when trouble came, I would always go to my mother. And her words was, Stephen... You have to pray. This was before I got saved. So I grew up praying um, um, every time something went um, contrary or wrong because I can always hear. My mother's passed away, but I can still hear her say, Stephen, you have to pray. I will in in the most hardest times where people will go to the left and people will go to the right. And I'm talking about saved people. I'm talking about people in the word. They will go left and right and seek man, but I will go to God. There's a scripture that in the Bible that says, Woe unto man that turns to Egypt for help. There's a scripture. I gotta go. I I haven't read it in a while, but I know it's there. The thing is, God wants to know for us to bring him into everything. And, mm -hmm. I, and I will say it like this. If it came down to a sock, I believe and with my heart that God would be tickled if I, if I put up a sock and, he, and said, Lord, is this a sock that you want me to put on? Now, mind you, he could care less about a sock. But it's the very thought that you're motivated to go to him for a sock. How much more would you go to him for anything? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. It, it, I think you froze up. Want for nothing. Our motivation should be him and him alone, and watch what happened to business business uh, adventures. Watch what happened to families. Watch what happened to um, 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 next door neighbors. Neighbors, not just you. When when we when we get so motivated and excited about God. What we do carries on to, to, to that neighbor on the right side, the neighbor on the left side, the neighbor behind us, the neighbor in, in, in front of us. It carries on. Why? It has to. There's a scripture in the Bible. I could name it out, but I'm not. But there was a region when Paul, when Paul went down and he was knocked off the horse, it gave three cities that multiplied because Paul became Saul. He gave three cities. It's in the book of Acts. Uh, search it out. I'll give you a little hint. It's in chapter 9. But three cities. How much more 
with with what we learn, how much more will what we learn as we put it to God and he and he takes it and multiplies us, multiplies us to grow so much that it goes to the next person. And, and that's a motivation in itself to see God's work as we as we walk him out, as we walk him out. And the Bible lets us know to acknowledge him in all things and all things give him thanks. Mm -hmm. So Tyrell, my next question would be, how does a leader delegate task without making the person under you feel less than? Well, when you uh, look at delegation, and delegation means that uh, you can do it yourself, but you choose to give someone else the opportunity to excel and grow on their own. And so when you're delegating a task to someone, <clears throat> There are good ways to do it now. I can tell you from the military, there were times we just say, hey, yeah, hey, man, I need this done. You do it. You know, we wasn't asking questions. We wasn't caring about the strengths, weaknesses or nothing. We were just going for it. But as you as you when you delegate toward people who are not directed underneath your path because of position, then they then they need then you need their permission. And so mm -hmm. when you are delegating under their permission, mm -hmm. basically you're looking at their strengths. And you're looking at if I can delegate this, um, how is that going to help that person as I delegate? Yes, I need the task done, but what kind of thing can I can he receive from that? Where's the growth in him? Because I delegated a task to him for him to because that's about building up a person to become leader, you know, building up leader after leader. If you're delegating it to him, then you're you're basically looking at the growth level which you want them to aspire to. And so you're giving them an opportunity to grow. And so I think you have to look at that in terms of how you're willing to serve people mm. delegation. When you said to serve people, so in because you're the leader, that means you don't just take, take, take. You're giving a lot mm. more than you're taking. Mm -hmm. I think as a leader, uh, even when people are given to you, you should be given. Mm. It, it should be like a continuous flow. It's flowing to you. You're trying to give it to somebody else and stuff. And I equate it when we were in the military, we were taught when we go to eat uh child, we call it child food, dinner, whatever it is you got to go eat. We had a line to eat as the commander, or as the leader, you never ate before your soldiers. Your soldiers always ate first, always. Even right now, uh, I know Pam has a challenge because she want to make my plate real quick. And and if we got kids in the house, I'll let the I'll let even my adult kids. I'll let, I'll let everybody go first, and then I come up last. Not that I don't appreciate everything that she does, but I want to always be in the position that I'm serving. I don't want to ever get to the position where I think so highly of myself that I can't help somebody else because then you're trying to be a dictator and you're not trying to be a leader. And I know we've been kind of talking around your business, but come to tell us what you do, Tyrone. Well, here's what I do. I give people the opportunity to tie into a system that will give them what I've gotten, that to give them the ability to become strong leaders, give them the ability to set goals and, and, and set a game plan out to get there. Give them the ability to strengthen their discipline in success because success and failure in life is all about clues. And if you can give people positive clues, and a lot of times people get tied up into what? <clears throat> There's a great book by Simon Sinek called, uh, it starts with why. You know, if you could start with why you're doing something and then how you do it is like I'm describing it. How you do it is that you, you, you get people to the level in which they can grow and they feel good about the achievement levels and the growth that they have because now they set themselves a goal that they can achieve, achieve and fight for 
And so now you're encouraging them to go after that goal. And then what they do doesn't matter. I mean, you can sell shoes, you can do whatever you want to do. The what, the what is never as important as the why. Mm. When you know why you're doing something, nothing else matters. You know, uh, some people get hung up on certain things like what I do in business. A lot of people will hear what I hear, hear how I do something. And they will think the how is the what or the why. And so they missed the whole point. My why is I want to be financially free and independent without caring about financial challenges. Because if I'm if I'm there, then everything that I do to help people is easy and it's flawless because I don't have to question where's the money coming from. Mm. I just do it. So when I know that much, then what then what I do is just it's just something, you know, hey, I, I can do Uber. If I'm making the <laughs> income that I need to make doing Uber, then that's where I am. But it, that's mm-hmm. that's where we are. So in short story, what I do is I help people find what they really are passionate about and then help guide them to get there. All right. Our next question is, how do you typically criticize or criticize somebody on your team and criticize sounds such a, such a bad word but you can take the good but with the good comes other stuff if I'm allowed to praise you and honor you I should if you're my leader you should have the availability to say you didn't do this right but how do you do it where you're not harmful to them? Because everybody's different. Now, I'm hardcore. Tyrone, you could come tell me, you know, you didn't set up that meeting right. You weren't on time. And I'm going to say, yes, sir. And I'm going to straighten my calendar out. But everybody not may not be able to take it that way. So how do you do it? And especially if there's a group of, group of your team together, what do you do? And, and, and that's a great question. I think... Uh... Many times you have to understand that individual person. You know, you can challenge people in a group setting where it's a lot of people and nobody feels threatened because it's kind of like what pastors say, hey, if you ain't twitching around, don't move move around so ain't nobody know I'm talking about you. You know what I'm saying? So when you do it in a big setting like that, you know, uh, people can feel it, but they don't feel like it's talking to them. But they know it's talking to them, but they don't feel like, oh, man, he, he's embarrassing me. In a group, when you're doing it individually, you 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 always – here's here's a lesson I learned. You always praise in public. And you always seek to give guidance. And I'm not going to say criticism or anything. I say guidance. Seek okay. to give them guidance in private. You know, because then you got a chance to – do a one-on-one talk and make sure that it's understood where you're coming from and that you, when you're giving that guidance, that you're not giving false guidance because of the mm-hmm. assumptions that you may have. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we can give folks advice that it might be on the wrong assumption and, and that we might be wrong. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's kind of look at, you know, always praise in public, uh, give correctness or give some guidance in private. Guidance in public. I got it. In private. All right. Our next question is going to be, how do you enjoy your team? And how do you teach them to spread their wings? How do you step back and allow them to lead once you've trained? Because some people are micromanagers. But how do you allow them to spread their wings? and step back and let them become the leader you've trained them to be. Well, I think that's, that's one of the, uh, that's what you look for when you, if you look at a process and what I do in terms of building an organization, that's what you start out expressing to them what you're looking to help them build. So when you see that, then you, that's what you were looking for. So it, 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 you have to just look at that and say, okay, now let's let them go. 
you know, I'm, I'm always available, but let them go. But if you always continue to look to help the next person, then you won't put pressure on that one person and you allow that person to spread. And when they need help, most of the time, if you're out helping a lot of people, they'll reach back and ask you, hey, can you help me out a little bit? I'm stuck right here. So now you have the ability to help them without trying to just go in without their asking. So you're not in, this is in church too. If you have a large number of members, you don't apply pressure to the members, but if you have a small amount of members, then everybody feels like you're on top of them. So even to some leaders in church right now, the ministry hasn't grown yet. What, it, what would you tell them? And either one of y'all can answer answer because we've been lay members and we've been leaders yeah. what do you tell them to help them to step out the way and allow god to do it great i'll let coke go first and then i'll go on go ahead coke well one of the biggest things and um especially with the i think that's an excellent question is we are called the sons of god and the only way we can be the sons of god if we are led by his spirit that's the only way we can be the sons of God. And God, the, the Spirit will lead us and guide us unto all truth and understanding. In, in other words, especially when you when when you over a group of people, he will lead you how to lead the people, even in, in whether it's a small group or a big group. The one thing is the the okay, the the, the spirit is not gonna tell one person one thing another person and another thing and another person another thing okay the spirit is going to speak and it's going to line up and as you see it lining up he will let you know how to direct each and every individual as the word lines up in the person um you asked a question about um dealing with people um We are to admonish, and, and uh, admonishment is is uh, give a warning, a, a warning that is not harsh. It's like, hey, you you might want to do this this way. You might want to go in this direction. Try well, try it this way. Um, and encouraging is, you know, you've done an excellent job. I really like what you did. Uh, I seen I seen the effect of what what you said to uh, to the group on 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 everybody's face. That that was excellent, you know. And so we really have to be in mind for what God is saying, because it, uh, um, He made us to be leaders, and He made us if we're listening and careful. He made us to understand his word and to be able to lead a group into different areas, uh, uh, whether it be business, whether it be church, whether it be going out and, and, and gathering, or whether it be pushing away from. Because sometimes we have to push away some people, some people, and God knows how to lead us. We have to just say, be open and willing to allow him to lead us because as he leads me, I will be able to lead the next person. That's okay, awesome. Tyrone. That's awesome. You know, um, when you look at congregate and, and I thought, think about this a lot because we're never the size that we want to be in terms of how we want to <laughs> grow. <our organization>. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that, um, uh, one of my senior business partners, Kevin, said, you know, when when you have a small congregation and people are trying to get people to do stuff, it's a, it sets a level of frustration, right? And that's the reason why they're doing it. And he said there are two times that you're really frustrated. One is when you don't have a game plan. Mm. You don't have a plan to move and grow. You're frustrated. And the second time is when you have a game plan and you ain't on it. Oh, oh. So, 
you're frustrated. Oh, so now you're trying to push your agenda on somebody else. Yeah. And, and causing them to grow. So when you look at an organization and a small membership trying to grow, uh, just like me, I say from a minister, pastor, whoever's trying to grow an organization, if the members ain't doing it fast enough, then who said you can't do it? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Why, why, why do you have to be frustrated because somebody else ain't doing nothing? If you find yourself frustrated, then you do it. When you get busy doing stuff, you're not frustrated because now you're on your game plan. Mm. I was afraid when you said that. <laughs> Don't have a game plan. So, and I'm going to ask it because I'm not a black man. And I, and I said I wasn't going to ask this question, but I guess I am. The society would have us believe that black men are not good leaders. What would you say to a group of Caucasian men right now? And we're not trying to prove it, but what would you say to them? Because y'all are leaders. Go ahead, Coke. I guess I got I got some good answer. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> okay. Um not gonna share my history, but based on where I went to school, I went to prim uh, predominantly all white school. Um, um, high school, uh, one one year, uh, one year at college, you were there, and it was almost the same thing in the predominantly white area. And where I live is a predominantly white area. Um, the thing is, is it's not just Caucasians that think that black men are not good leaders. It it is our own, our own, um, and facing um, the upward hill battle is even to a black man or woman or a white man and woman. A black man has to be ten times better than the white person uh, 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 to to even get some kind of recognition. Um, me and Tyrone and I go back to our high school days growing up and, and we, we were the best in the city. We were the best in the city. We went to two different high schools. We went to the same junior high but, and um, through our junior high experience, I think that I really believe that that catapulted us uh, in, in, in our, uh, our sports careers. And we were the best in the city, and people knew. I mean, you, you uh, at that area, them four years of college, I mean, high school, you, uh, you knew about a Stephen Coker, a Tyrone Bird, uh, 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 Kevin Coswell, and, and the number. I can name a number of them. And the thing is, we were top of our game. But when we come out in, uh, into the adult world, it, it – it even uh, you have to be even more on your game. Uh, you can. It's not good enough just to be just as good as everybody else. And, and but but here, there I say this. There I say this. But when you become a child of God, it's not good enough to be just as good as everybody else because you you are you are at a higher level automatically because of who you are and whose you are. So it, it, it becomes not a racial thing, but it comes a spiritual thing and where you are and to know that, 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 that where you are, it may look like you're not the best, but you are. And I'll give you a prime example, Gideon. The story about Gideon, Gideon, God came to Gideon and said, Gideon, you're going to leave my army. Gideon said, no, I'm the poorest of all the nation of Israel. I'm the poorest, I'm the weakest of all the nation of Israel. <clears throat> okay. And when Gideon got finally got the armies together, I think he got hundreds and thousands of men. He had too many men. And, and he, he got he said, well, if, if some of you feel weak and don't want to go to battle, you don't have to go. 
okay? And he got rid of some. And God said, you still got too many. <laughs> okay? And he said, anyone that don't laugh, <laughs> get rid of. And there was some, and it got down to 300 men. So he, he, he led an army. Now, this was a man, the poorest man, and he led an army of 300 men to beat hundreds and thousands of men. So when we we have to not look at our where we are, I am facing an up right now. I'm going through something. I'm facing an uphill battle. But I know my daddy, I call him daddy. I call him daddy. I know my daddy got me. I know he has me. Okay? Because they don't expect for me to win. And if I looked at it with my natural, eye, natural eyes, ain't no way. But when I see it from daddy's point of view, we cannot look at, we can't look eye to eye. We have to look from the kingdom point of view of who we are in the kingdom into our situation. And that Amen. changes. That changes the playing field. Can nobody stop you? You can. Hey, you can't. You, you cannot be stopped. You cannot be stopped. Why? Because you can't be moved. I, my my anchor is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that that's my answer. <laughs> Come on, Tyrell. You know it's it, it's awesome. You know there are. We have to, just like Steve said, you have to know who you are, whose you are. You know, uh, I was in the minority, just like you said, when I'm in the majority when we uh, come out of Scott, but going into college, I was in a, a, a major university where there was only 10% black population playing football and probably about 10%, maybe 15% on the football team. So there was this big disparity. But here's one thing that... Uh, and my father kind of taught me this because that's just the type of person he was. He always said that you're a bird and you don't back down, you don't quit. And that gave me encouragement. You know, he's always a person that encouraged me. And uh, when you know who you are, you know who made you. Even though people might look at you a certain way, you walk into the room, you know that if you're, you know who you are. Command the room if you have to. Walk a little faster. <laughs> Whatever you got to do, keep your head up high and do those things. And here's something that we were watching last night. Uh, think about Moses, if you think about it. Okay. Uh, Moses was one of the greatest leaders ever told in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. What color was his skin? Moses was black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But every movie <laughs> series on TV, when they talk about Bible characters, do they show anybody look hardly like us? No, sir. So we've been, dece been deceived, been fooled. We've got these lynch letters going around. You know, we're still trying to get through those lynch letter junk. And all that deception trying to keep black women from thinking that there are not strong black men around and they are you know and a lot of black men are fused confused and so that's why myself and steve and others that's one of the the, the purpose we have is to make sure we help them show them not to be confused mm. you know part of what i do in the, in, in this business platform one of that's what makes it exciting every day when i do that because i'm not just talking about creating money yeah, money is the money is the the bait, the little fish that put on the hook. You know mm -hmm. the little, yeah. But I'm 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 trying to catch the soul. Mm. And if I can catch the soul, then we can have the soul transformed back into where it should be. Mm. And in that way, there are things going on in this world that don't have to be that way. Yeah, it's gonna be junk, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be that way. But we don't have to we don't have to. We don't have to be on the short end. It's a choice. Yeah, yeah, and so true. 
that's what I do. It, it's so that I give people a choice. Well, your favorite fan is all oh, Miss Pamela Bird, and she said, You better preach, Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I have a couple more questions, but after what both of you said, I think it's very powerful. I have nothing against interracial marriage, nothing against. My grandmother was Caucasian. I don't, I'm a mixed person. So, um, but our young people are, our young black men are really battling, wanting to be leaders, not having, thinking they don't have that example. If they come across this real, I would like for you two to have the last word tonight. What would you tell a young black man who's struggling, whose dad is not in his life? who might be in the gang life, who might be homeless right now. What would you tell him to help him pull his boots up and tell him to keep trying? Because, I mean, I have two sons, and they call me, but I always steer them toward a man. Mm. I raised my sons, but I've never been a man. So I mm. always gear them toward a man that I know who's been successful. Not just in money, but in life, spiritually, in their marriage. So it would might be difficult for a young black man to take what I said because I'm a female. But what would y'all tell a young black man who needs some encouragement today? Either one of y'all can go first. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, one, one of the things uh, for me is if I meet them personally, I find out where they are. Um, um, and um, I encourage them. I let them know that they are loved. Because here's here's one of the biggest things that that hurts our young men. And 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 it, uh, the Lord has blessed me to see something. It's not just with our black men. It's across the board. Okay, um, they're hurting in heart. Mm from the heart. They're missing the love of God. So number one is, uh, is find out where they are. If I can uh, minister to them, I'll minister to them and help them find a church, a God Bible believing church um, that has a good brotherhood ministry that reaches out to young men. That, that's a hard, right now it's hard because they're, they're, they, there's, they are very few and far between, in between finding one that does that. But I want I would like to start a program overall that, that, that reaches out to multicultural young men and boys and older men and boys to come together and fellowship and grow uh, the way uh, our Lord and Savior has meant for us to grow. In the Bible, you, you know, they traveled from house to house, okay, and they came together. The Bible says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together, okay? And I'm not, this is not a, about a church thing, but this is about bro young men and brothers coming together, supporting each other, loving on one another, and being able to go out and take that love out into the streets. You know, there's so many that, 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 that they are out there walking zombies. I drive down the street and people are walking down the street, young brothers, like zombies, you know, or like the, you know, the, the what was it, the walking dead. And sometimes, if, 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 sometimes I will stop and talk to them. And 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 just to let the, just to let them know that they are loved, and the response is phenomenal. You know, they 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 respond to to true love. You know, and I thank God for for um, being able to do that, for being able to recognize that. So I would just say um, to encourage young men to start looking for places that are uh, uh, God-led, God-fed, and God-led to go to. We need more of them. We need more brothers that will stand out and, and reach out to them. You know, and that, so uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping to start something 
Uh, if not, just this, this summer, if, if not this summer, just going and buying some uh, uh, what it what it pork shoulder, cut uh, cooking it, cutting it up and making uh, uh, uh what is it uh, barbecued uh, 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 pork sandwiches and, and carrying on, and it, I mean people would come for that. So if I can minister that way, I would minister. They they get a sandwich and, and 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 just to say, hey man, I love you, man, I love you. It's something about that. Tyrone? Yeah, and and, and that's excellent, Coke. Um, <clears throat> just like Coker said, the biggest thing when you when you run into young men and women who are hurting, and particularly the young men who are hurting, they have a there's a lot of identity crisis going on. Mm -hmm. uh, deciding, you know, this been I was maybe made a mistake at the, at birth or whatever it is, all that kind of junk. Uh, because they're, they're, they're missing the, the identity of who they are. Yes. And they, sometimes people are too quick to beat them up mm. rather than come to where they are and find out what's going on. You know, they, they may say all these crazy things, but, you know, a lot of times they'll say that as a test to see who you really are. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys, a lot of people come up, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if you're really who you are. I'm going to tell you the worst part of me and see if you accept me. Mm. And if you can accept the worst part of me, then slowly you can gather that person's heart mm. and allow the heart to change. You know, it's a, yes. it's a heart issue. You know, and it is a hard when you if, if you can get the heart, then you can actually change the thought process and you can change the person. But just like a Coker said, you know, it's you got to get to the heart. You got to get to come. You got to get to know them and mm -hmm. uh, come down off the horse, get on the ground, walk and talk. Not saying that you got to do what they do. None of that stuff. But they know the difference. They know the difference yes, they that do. you're trying to be there with them, but you're not trying to be a part of them. They know. I think both of you gentlemen have really, really good hearts. And I hope that there's somebody that comes across this and sees this and know that there's more than a second chance. Yes. All of us need somebody to love us. Absolutely. We always we want somebody to love us. And I think you've shown the love of God through leadership tonight. And that lead, and there's so much going on with leadership in the world right now. And there's so much doubt, especially in church leadership. All the things we're listening to, sometimes I have to just kind of turn the TV off because I'm like, mm. got to turn the social media off because there are so many people following leaders and being deceived. But we have two men tonight that are not trying to deceive, who are really wanting to lead and who really want to love our people and want to do kingdom work. And that is the whole purpose of Straight Talk Food for the Soul, that I'm not the only source. I'm bringing the resource to you. All you got to do is reach out to me, and I'll reach out to them if you need some help. So I thank y'all for coming on tonight. I appreciate you both. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And this yeah. was supposed to be about discipline and leadership, and it went somewhere totally different. I don't know how. God knows. <laughs> I, my daddy uh, knows. But I appreciate y'all coming on tonight. We want to say good night to everybody. And y'all, after it's over, go back in the comments, say hello to the guests, say something to them. But we appreciate you spending your Saturday night with us. Everybody have an amazing weekend. Good night, everybody.